What's up everybody, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question. We have to find the angle that the vector A that has component six, four, negative three makes with the z-axis. So let's show what's going on briefly on a diagram. So this here is the z-axis. We got the y-axis. And then we got the x-axis. And then uh, notice the component six, four, negative three. So the X component is positive, Y component is positive, the Z component's negative. So let's extend that Z axis down. So basically this vector is gonna be pointing somewhere here, right? Positive X component, positive Y component, and a negative Z component. So this here is uh, six, four, and negative three. And they're basically asking, what's the angle that this vector, it's pointing downwards, makes with the z-axis? So they're solving for, let's call this theta here. So how can you do this? Well, there's two ways. I'm gonna show you a long way and then a short way. So starting off with the long way, notice that uh, we can create a vector along the z-axis. And what's a super easy vector to create along the z-axis? Well, 0, 0, and 1. Or 0, 0, and any number, but let's just pick 1 to keep things as simple as possible. Right? x component 0, y component 0, and then you have a z component, so it's along that vector with these components is along the z-axis. So if we can find the angle between this vector and this vector, that's the same thing as finding the angle between this vector and the z-axis because this vector is along the z-axis. So let's call this vector B here. And then this is vector A. So we got two vectors in component form. How do we find the angle in between them? Well, we use the dot product formula, so A dot B equals magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cos theta. And notice we can figure out what all of these are. So A dot B is gonna be what? Zero times six is zero, zero times four is zero, one times negative three is negative three. So that's the dot product between them. Magnitude of A is going to be all of these uh, squared, summed up, and then square rooted. So 6 squared plus 4 squared, that's 36 plus 16. That gives us, what, 52? And then plus 9, that would give us uh, 61. So square root of 61 is the magnitude of A. Magnitude of B is simply just 1. All right, you'll end up with the square root of one squared, which is just one. And we're solving for that cos theta. So to isolate for cos theta, we got negative three over root 61. And then to solve for theta, we would just inverse cos. That ratio right there, negative three over um, the square root of 61. And when you plug that in your calculator, you would end up getting 112.59 degrees. So that there is the angle between this vector and this vector, or this vector and the z-axis. That's your final answer. So that's one way to do it. So you can always find a vector on the axis that you're working with and then just find the angle between that vector and the vector you're given. So what if instead they asked us to find the angle between this vector and the y axis? Well, we would pick a vector on the y axis, zero, one, and zero. And we would do the exact same thing. Or if they were asking for the angle between uh, the vector and the x-axis, we could pick 1, 0, 0, and do the same thing. Now, a quick way that you can do this, if you learned it, is something with, uh, there's a formula for coordinate axis, and we basically get to this point quicker. 
And what that means is the formula, it's basically, erase all of this here. Basically the angle between a vector and any of the axes. So let's deal with the Z axis in this case, since we were asked about it. It's always going to be cos theta, the angle between the vector and the axis. It's going to be the component of that vector of whatever axis you're working with. So we're working with the Z axis. So we take the Z component, negative three, over the magnitude of this vector. And we know the magnitude of this vector, we calculated it before, was root 61. So we end up getting to this line a lot quicker than doing the whole dot product formula. Right, so it'll always be this. Now, what if we were uh, looking for the angle between the vector and the x-axis? So let's call it alpha. So instead of doing the whole dot product between the two vectors, we can just say cos of alpha. Because we're looking for the angle between the vector and the x-axis, we would take the x component, so six, over the magnitude of that vector, root 61. Or if we were finding this right here, let's call it uh, beta, angle beta. So between the vector and the y-axis, so cos of beta would be the y component, four over root 61. And then you would just inverse cos, all of those to get the angles, right? So you don't have to do that whole dot product thing right? You can just uh, get to this formula really quickly. I don't like memorizing formulas, so I like to kind of do the longer way, and it just kind of keeps my mind free of formulas, and I can just sort of understand what's going on, and then just sort of work through it. But if you want to just remember this formula, if your teacher allows you to, you can do that. So it's basically the component of whatever axis you're working with. So the z-axis, the x-axis, the y-axis, right? The respective components all over the magnitude of that vector. And then you just inverse cos and you get that angle right away.